My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Let us bow together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are magnificent and wonderful, holy and beautiful. We praise you as our creator and our friend, for you have journeyed through every part of life with us. You have sustained us, you have nourished us, and you have taken care of us. So Lord, in response to your goodness, our hearts bow before you in worship. Bless us, we pray, with the Holy Spirit, so that as we worship you and as we think of your goodness, as we meditate upon your word, may everything be holy and pleasing in your sight. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 and verses 5 to 9. Then Moses said to the people, Obey all the laws that I am teaching you, and you will live and occupy the land which the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add anything to what I command you, and do not take anything away. Obey the commands of the Lord your God that I have given to you. I have taught you all the laws, as the Lord my God has told me to do. Obey them in the land that you are about to invade and occupy. Obey them faithfully, and this will show the people of other nations how wise you are. When they hear of all these laws, they will say, what wisdom and understanding this great nation has. No other nation, no matter how great, has a God who is so near when they need him as the Lord our God is to us. He answers us whenever we call for help. No other nation, no matter how great, has laws so just as those that I have taught you today. Be on your guard, make certain that you do not forget, as long as you live, what you have seen with your own eyes. Tell your children and your grandchildren. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. 
The Word of God is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. Do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teachings come true. Remember that as long as heaven and earth last, not the least point nor the smallest detail of the law will be done away with, not until the end of all things. So then, whoever disobeys even the least important of the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, whoever obeys the law and teaches others to do the same will be great in the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. It is good to be here, as I said, to lead us and to reflect for a few moments on that the passages for today. First taken from Deuteronomy, Moses' words, and then from Jesus' words from Matthew chapter 5. So as we prepare our hearts, our minds to reflect, to listen to God's words proclaimed, I invite us to bow our heads in prayer once more. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, as we come to you in prayer, we give you thanks and praise for you are the God who speaks to us. You are the God who directs our paths, our lives. You are the God who gives us that lamp and light to our feet, who steers us and guides us the way that you would have us go. You have set for us a plan and a purpose, and your word reveals that to us. You give to us a deeper wisdom, understanding, and insight into who you are as our God through your word. We give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, that we can look to the Old Testament, your words spoken to the prophets through Moses to your people and see it and feel it and know that it still applies to us today. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the portion of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is teaching and where he teaches about the law. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you touch each and every one of us as we have come into your presence, as we gather as a community of faith, Heavenly Father, we ask that you draw us closer to you, to your word. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear us, that you receive this prayer as we offer this through the word made flesh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we look at this passage of scripture, these two passages of scripture, and as they speak of the law of God, we first meet Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. And that first word that we meet in the portion of scripture that was read to us is then. So then, of course, points to something that has happened before. God has just informed Moses. He has just told Moses that because of the disobedience of his people, because of their actions, the decisions that they made, that that present generation, and Moses included, would not see, make it, physically enter into the promised land. He told Moses that he could climb the mountain, Pisgah, and he can look and he can see it, but he will not set foot there. This is, of course, after Moses pleads and he speaks to God, does not happen. And Moses is telling the people, the nation of Israel, I, we, not going to enter into the promised land. And he says, I have pleaded, I have begged. All but one person, I think his name was Caleb, was allowed to enter into. That generation did not. But Moses, of course, not responding or reacting with bitterness or resentment towards God who had been faithful to them, who had led them, took them out of slavery, been with them, provided for them in the desert, led them by the cloud and the fire. Moses stands and he speaks to the nation. And he asks them to remember the law of God. To remind them of what that law stated and he informed them that all that he had said came directly from God. 
and he had taught them of what God required, what God wanted of them in their actions, in their relationship with them. And he makes that appeal to them. He says, be obedient to the law of God. This is who you are. This is what defines you. This is your identity. So he asks them, follow God's instructions. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, in those selected verses 17 to 19, he sort of echoes this, and he speaks of the law of God. Jesus, who comes into the scene as this radical rabbi, who is doing things that is upsetting the status quo and the leaders and the church authorities and some of the people at, during his time when he was physically present in Jerusalem and in, in that part of the world, he is speaking and he is saying, listen, listen, I am not here to cast aside and put aside the law. I am not here to tell you to break the law. But in fact, I am here to fulfill the law. And tonight, as we continue on our Lenten journey, we can see we can understand and we can ask God to show and reveal to us in a powerful way. For we know it to be the truth that from the time God established, when he initiated that covenant with Israel on Mount Sinai, when Moses emerged with the law, the Ten Commandments that God set and had set already in motion for the people of Israel in their history, his plan of salvation that would come through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Because when we look at the law's demands, the hymn, Rock of Ages, tells us, not the labor of my hands can ever, what? Fulfill the law's demands. The demand of the law of God upon the nation of Israel, upon each and every one of us, is one that is impossible for us to fulfill. There is nothing that we can do to adequately represent or show by our actions that we can fulfill the law of God. Moses urges the nation to attempt and to follow and to be obedient, but we see how they continued to fall and to fail in what they were supposed to do. Even when we look at David, as that great king and beloved of the Lord, we see David breaking plenty, if not all, of the commandments. The law of God. When we look at our lives, and I always challenge congregations, and especially communicant classes, when we speak of this covenant, to examine themselves and their lives, and to see where and how they have break, broken all of the Ten Commandments. And some people stop and say, well, no, I never lie in my life. And I say, well, look, you're doing that now. But when we look at it, we see how difficult and impossible it is. You see, God first shows, and when Jesus speaks of the law and he breaks it down, when they ask him, what is the most important commandment? What is the most important directive spoken and given by God? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, soul, spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we see it. We see how difficult this is to do. Have no other God but me. We can look and we can say, good. Yes, we worship you. We acknowledge you as God. But then he continues in the second commandment and he says, don't bow to any idols. An idol is anything that we put before God in importance, in priority and we can think and we can see in our daily lives in what we do how so very often we break this commandment and we put and place other things before God and we worship whether it is celebrities whether it is our cell phone whether it is ourselves before our God don't take the Lord's name in vain so very often we do that how many of us we're probably not here we pray to win a lottery, a lotto, whatever you call it. How many of us pray to, win, to pray to ask God that somebody who has done us wrong learn a lesson 
and God shows them and do for them. When we utter and say prayers like this, this is what it means to take God's name in vain. It doesn't mean you bounce your toe on your ball, oh God. You bounce your toe, you're in pain. Oh God is the right response. It means to use God's name for vain purposes. To say and to utter things that are not of God in our prayer and in what we do. Broken those commandments. We cannot fulfill the Lord's demands. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Okay. So we set aside time for worship. And we want to make sure that we are there in the house of the Lord. And we want to make sure that we worship and also on Sunday. But what if cricket going on? As I kind of had to worry, God wouldn't miss me for one Sunday. What if we have a lime appo an appointment? What if we had an event the day before that has made us tired and will take us away from our Sunday worship, worshiping as a community of faith on this day that God asks us to? We can't live up to that. So in our relationship with God, we see how we have failed the law. What about that fifth commandment that says, honor parents, father and mother. We know that in today's world, in today's society, where there's betrayal between parents and what is happening, what is taking place, that this is difficult to do. Impossible in certain situations and circumstances. All right. That is the bridge. We have come here because of that fifth commandment. Our parents, they have brought us here. Now let us look at what God asks us in his law about our relationship with others. He asks us not to kill anybody. Good. So we could say we covered, right? But then Jesus steps in and he speaks and he is saying, listen, if you bear any malice in your heart towards a brother or sister who you worship with and you come into the temple, you come into God's presence, it is as though you have committed murder and against them. So we think about that and we see Jesus switching things up and challenging us and making us recognize and realize that we have killed people. We're probably killing people all now. Okay, so that's difficult. Then he speaks of adultery and we can say, yes, good. I have that covered. Faithful in my marriage. But then Jesus speaks and he tells us through his word, if you even look at another person with lust in your eyes, then you have committed adultery in your heart. Bam. That goes out the window. Then he tells us, don't steal anything from anyone. We don't really have to go into that. I'm sure all of us, has, we would have at some point in our lives taken something that does not belong to us. Okay. Don't bear false witness against anyone. Don't lie. Well, then... I there again is an obvious one that we would have all fallen short in its demand on our lives. And the final one is one that we do each and every day of our lives where God asks us not to covet, not to want anything, not to look at anything that anyone else has and want it for our own. We do that all the time. Whether it is a position at work, a promotion that we want, that we believe that someone else did not deserve and they have gotten. Whether it is we are driving on the road, I did it come in here at the traffic lights where I saw a nice Lexus turn and I thought, wow, I, what, that is a nice Lexus. We do it. We have fallen and we have failed the demands of the law. Moses in Leviticus, as he goes through even the additional and all the extra added things that he put so that the nation of Israel could continue to establish their identity. He even added things like, do we duck, do we shrimp, do we pork? Well, we won't even go there. Let me stick to our original 10. Jesus then comes, and he is... The answer. He is God's plan of salvation for us. This is what we are reminded of in the Lenten journey and the Lenten walk. 
Jesus prepares himself. He puts and places himself in the wilderness, in the desert, and he's tempted by Satan. Because Satan wants us, the devil wants us, evil, negativity wants us to feel unworthy, to feel as though we can never meet and live up to who God wants us to be. And therefore we will continue to stray and we will continue to fall and we will continue to separate ourselves from God because we believe that communion with him is unattainable. Jesus places himself in the wilderness, in the desert, to prepare himself to fulfill the law. Fulfillment of the law means that grace of God shown and demonstrated to us on the cross of Christ. If we were to think of it, we know and there's been a lot of talk and discussion about the new demerit point system. And we would have heard the recent, perhaps, uh, the little article, the news um, thing that came out where the guy who had the chip number plate, we heard this with the P and it wasn't showing and he still got charged for it. That is the police fulfilling the demands of the law. If you are driving at 101 kilometers an hour, you are breaking the law. And to fulfill the demands of the law, you have to pay your ticket. This is what it is. If you are rushing home to see a sick loved one, or if there's an emergency and you cross 100 kilometers an hour, you are breaking the law. And if, to fulfill the law's demands, if you are stopped, if you are caught, if you have broken any of these, you will have to pay a fine and you have to lose some, you, you get that, those demerit points, whatever the system is. Jesus comes in and he says, I will fulfill the demands of the law. For each and every one of you, I will stand and I will defeat Satan. I will take away all that is evil and negativity, all the mistakes, all the guilt, all the shame that you carry. Knowing that you have failed, knowing that you have fallen, knowing that you carry the hurt of the sins of your actions all through your life's journey. Jesus now comes and steps in and he says, paid in full. I have fulfilled the law's demands. And this is what we celebrate during our Lenten journey and our Lenten walk. Satan tried to distract him and bring him away from it and said to him, and they told him, listen, listen, you don't have to do it. You don't have to go and walk this path. You don't have to do this for them, but he has done it for each and every one of us. He has come and he has shown us. If we were to look at how the fulfillment of the law has gone, he has shown us that we are to have God as first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, he tells us. Put God first. Don't worry about anything else. Make nothing else your idol. Don't worry or stress about anything else because you put God first, everything else will be added on to you. He speaks and he tells us and he shows us, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. But he demonstrates that the Sabbath of worship is not just what is done within these four walls, but it is about touching and transforming lives. It is about outreach. It is about charity, benevolence. It is about healing. It is about being there, present in the world and bringing others to experience and encounter who he is. This is what Jesus shows. He fulfills the law for us even by his actions, what he shows. He shows us that he will take the eye for an eye, the life for life. He has given his life for each and every one of us. He was murdered. He was killed so that we can have that life. Jesus comes in, steps in to our existence, to our life's journey and our experience and says to us, you, I love you and I fulfill the, law demand, the Lord's demands for you. We have all fallen short and we deserve that punishment. But he comes in and he tells us, I take it all away. Journey, carry that cross. I have laid my life down so that you may live. That is the blessed message of this Lenten journey. That is the blessed message that comes to us through and from the cross. That is the blessed message of the empty tomb.
Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. And as we pray, I want us to just open ourselves and our lives to the God who, in his plan for our lives, has placed Jesus, has known that he has that plan of salvation for each and every one of us. Salvation to save us, to rescue us, to redeem us, to reconcile us to himself. Jesus steps in. And he pays our dues. There is nothing, nothing that we could do to meet the Lord's demands. And God has shown us through his blessed word, through the history that we read, the accounts of the nation of Israel, the consequences. He has shown us the consequences of not living up to his law. But now, now he has given to us the righteousness of Christ, the holiness, the sanctification, the justification, won for us by the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are the search of hearts. You are the one who even David cries out and says, search me, O God, cleanse me. You know our hearts, you know our thoughts, you know our motives. You know, Heavenly Father, all our secret shame and sin. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, if we were to truly look at our lives, we see that we are unworthy of your love, unworthy of your presence in our lives. But we thank you, O oh God. We thank you that in your wisdom, that wisdom that Moses told the nation of Israel that others will see when they follow and observe the law. In your wisdom, the wisdom of the cross, in your love for us, the love of Christ, our Lord, the compassion and the mercy that he has shown to us on that cross. You have wiped the slate clean. You have removed each and every blot and stain. You have brought us that new life. Let us, O oh God, tonight in this time and in this moment, whatever sin, whatever obsession, whatever fixation, whatever addiction, that may be controlling us, whatever distraction there may be in our lives, we pray, O oh God, that by the power of your Spirit, that it be, be removed in Jesus' name. We ask, Heavenly Father, for that rejuvenation and for that revival. As we go through this Lenten journey, let it not just be a cycle of emotions, that we go through year after year. But let it be indeed a time for growth. A time where we experience Jesus, his walk and his journey. And where we too listen to his command that if we want to be his disciples, that we also take up the cross and follow him. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, look upon us. Remind us that through Jesus, we are now fit to be called your sons and your daughters. Remind us that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And let this Lenten journey be one where we continue to show by our actions, our interactions, and our reactions who you are to the world around us, to all those who we meet. Let them know and see you, Christ, in us. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, bless all those or anyone who may be struggling with any anxiety, any fear, anything that may be bothering anyone, oh God, we call upon you. We know that you touch, you transform, you heal, you strengthen, you comfort. Hear all our prayers, oh God. Receive them as we offer these in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
the name of the one who fulfills the Lord's demands for each and every one of us. Receive this prayer in his name and hear us as we join together in the words that he has taught us to pray.
We thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you thanks for this time of worship, for this time, Heavenly Father, where you have spoken unto us, where you have moved us, where you have touched our lives. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, as we leave this place, as we go to our homes and our families, as we go to our places of work, our colleagues, our employees, our employers, as we go to our students, our teachers, as we go, Heavenly Father, to Whatever and wherever you may lead us, we ask that you go with us, that you allow the light of your love, your truth, your power and your presence to shine in and through us so that all those who we meet can experience and encounter you. We ask, Heavenly Father, for blessings. We ask that you continue to guard and guide us in all that we do. And we offer this, we offer this prayer as we seek the continued blessing of the one God whom we worship and who calls us to service, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray the blessings of this God upon all those who are gathered here, upon all the members of this congregation, and upon all of God's faithful people here and everywhere. <laughs> 